Hello and welcome to the Dark Den, a place where I keep a bunch of different animals, mostly tarantulas, and a place where I do videos about them. This is the first room of the Dark Den. Over here I have mainly medium-sized tarantulas and some other animals like scorpions. And on over that side I have some bigger tarantulas, like the biggest tarantulas, and some lizards, and also some creepy crawlers. And over here I have one lizard and that huge enclosure is just for one single but huge tarantula. So in this room I only keep tarantulas while in other room, this room, this is where the magic happens because right here on this table I record majority of my videos. I have the light setups, I have camera, monitor, I have additional light, you know, for the for better picture quality. Also, on the table I have uh, small tarantulas, like not the smallest, but instead of these cups are tarantulas that are too small for bigger enclosures, but in the same time too big for like tiny cups, because I also have a bunch of tarantulas in tiny cups that I will show you later. And over here I have some bigger tarantulas and some arboreal tarantulas that are also bigger and not so bigger. And also these are... Ter okay, yeah, and if you turn on the other side, right here, you have the jungle area, the biggest enclosure project on the YouTube, for sure. I mean, there are bigger enclosures on the YouTube, most likely, but this is the biggest project that is following the entire process of making an enclosure of this size. I already did two videos about it, and soon I will have the third update. So if you're interested in that stuff, make sure to search for that after this video. So from where do we start? I will grab you, I will grab the camera, and we will first start from this room. And actually, we can immediately thank the sponsor of this video. That was a smooth segue, right? Anyhow, you see, this is the skull that I received a couple of videos ago, and now I mounted it on the wall, and now it fits this area perfectly. I used to have this skull at that place, but it was too wide for the for this spot, so that's why I ordered this skull. And it was sent to me uh, from the company named Skull Bliss, and they, they sell these amazing looking skulls. This is actually a real skull that is covered with these mirrors, and you see these are the real horns that are hand carved and then painted. They have a bunch of different designs, so in the description you'll find the link to their webpage, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. Now, right underneath the skull we have the aquarium, you see, and I totally forgot to mention it because uh, the aquariums aren't really the main theme of this channel, but inside I have a bunch of these neon tetra fishes, you see. Also I have these yellow cleaning buggers and some other ones. I have a bunch of snails that I can't really get rid of, so that's why I got these guys, you see. And these snails actually eat these snails that are like pests. So yeah, a snail that gets rid of other snails. Pretty cool concept, no? And I currently don't see a single one, mostly because it is night. But I have a bunch of, bunch of shrimps inside, but it's crazy how they are all hiding. And look, a yellow cleaning fish, cleaning body. And his abdomen is actually kind of transparent, so you can kind of see inside. <laughs> Now we can move on this wall, you see, majority of tarantulas, as I already said, but uh, this corner is reserved for some scorpions, you see, here is one desert scorpion, this one is not visible, but over there in the back you can see a black one, and inside of this enclosure I have a big one, but it is not currently visible, um, I can show you this one, just a second, these scorpions got a medically significant sting, so I don't want to use my hands when I'm manipulating with the objects inside, you know. Apparently they wouldn't kill a healthy person, but I really don't want to risk it. Oh, there we go. You see? You see, this is a mean fat tail scorpion, and you can see why it is called fat tail, because it got actually a fat, fat, fat tail for sure, and the entire scorpion is actually fat. <laughs> okay, let's bring back his cork bark, so he can continue hiding. Actually, so she can hide, because this is a female, and inside of this I have one dead stalker that is kind of hiding also. Uh, by the way, a lot of these tarantulas, a lot of these creepy crawlers are hiding, so I won't be really going into great detail to show you each and every one. I'm just going to show you the ones that are uh, currently outside, 
and if there are something special i will show you the video where you can see how they actually looks how they actually look uh, we can continue down here in these three enclosures i also have scorpions inside of oh you can uh, if i'm really mm, this one is cool so i will also take this special stick so we can lure this scorpion you see mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you see, <laughs> this is a Asian forest scorpion and this individual is actually an offspring from my female that I used to have. So it is cool that I have her babies now growing up. Also in this enclosure, the same scorpion, but this one is a bit smaller and the entire enclosure is a bit darker. So yeah, you have seen this. While in this enclosure, as I said, I have scorpion. Actually, I have scorpions. Look at this. This is a, a species of scorpions that are actually communal and they can peacefully live together as long as they have enough food for them. Pretty cool sight. And the best thing is females are actually parthenogenic. So that means that they don't need males to reproduce. They just basically clone themselves. And this whole colony came from a single scorpion female that I received like six years ago or so, maybe even more. That means that if you want a scorpion that will never die, kinda it will never die because the individuals die, but they just keep cloning themselves and you will have clones forever. Then we go to these underneath and these are actually also super cool. These are spiders, the six eyed sand spider. And oh, this one is actually visible, but I actually wanted to show you how good they are at hiding. Thankfully I have two more. This one is hiding, so I can demonstrate you their abilities. This enclosure looks empty, but if I shake it, ta -da, ta -da, the spider appears out of nowhere. It was hiding in the sand, and that is how it is waiting for a prey to approach. I have three of these, all three are females. And also surprisingly, they live for a long time. I have them, I have these females for also five to six years maybe, so relatively long lifespan for a true spider. Now these enclosures are empty except this one where I have a, a secondary lateralis colony, you see the red runners, but they are all baby red runners, you see, <laughs> small ones. <laughs> oh, they are climbing on my hands. The reason why I say secondary colony is because I separated the othichas, the roach eggs, I separated them from my main colony because something happened with my main colony and the colony basically completely died. I have no idea what happened. I just noticed that every day there is more and more dead ones. So I quickly separated all the, all the othichas from that colony and now this one is fine, so I have no idea what happened. Okay, let's carry on. These next enclosures and majority of other enclosures on this wall contain tarantulas, uh, but you see, this is what I was talking about. You have an enclosure, but it appears empty because the tarantula actually got a hole over there and over there, and it is basically just hiding underneath. So, same thing over here. Oh, <laughs> you see, tarantula darting from one hole to another. Over there you can see another one, but they are not really showstoppers. Uh, these enclosures, these enclosures houses some... Ooh, I just spotted that tarantula inside of... This enclosure is actually outside. Look at this Ciriopagopus minax. I think that she will kind of panic now because this is her hole and I don't know if she knows how to get inside that quickly when we are disturbing her like that. But look at this enclosure. This is one of the prettiest enclosures that I have just because of this plant. It is amazing. <laughs> you have no idea where to go, right? Too much plants around. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry for the twitches, but it is hard to look through the display and not twitch. Ah, at least you can see her better now. And in the other enclosure, you see another Ciriopagopus minax, but oh, this is actually a mature male and he actually managed to find where his entrance is. Unlike this one, she's still searching for it. She knows that it is there somewhere, but she cannot find it now. Well, why did you venture out from your, from your height that far if you cannot 
come back. <laughs> and inside of this enclosure, I also have one fossorial torrential. Fossorial torrential is the torrential that requires a deep substrate like this because they love to dig. While these, these are terrestrials and even though they dig holes, you see, they will often just hang outside like these are. They are basically always outside, you see. This tarantula never made a hole, even though she have the same opportunity like this one. I mean this one and this one. They can dig under this cork bark, but she just chose to not do this. This is a Lasiodora difficilis, but I have some prettier over there. Underneath, Trixopelma pruriens, mature male. This is the Pamphobeteus species purple or something like that. You can see some purplish coloration, <laughs> barely, <laughs> barely. Uh, these are empty enclosures, while over there, this is a uh, Nandu Chromatus. This one got a bit more coloration. Red abdomen, I mean, the abdomen is black, but the hairs on the abdomen are actually red. Perfect combination with white and black. This one is hiding, same thing over here, but this Avicularia Avicularia is outside, you see? And she's actually freshly molted, so... Mm -mm. Mm, let's get some action from her. Ooh. <laughs> I hate when they don't do anything for like 10 seconds and then suddenly they react. That always gets me. These are all hiding from what I can see. While over here we have a Petzalteria Metallica. <laughs> Mature male, you see? You know that Metallicas are actually blue, but males don't really have that coloration. You will see it better on the female a bit later. Inside of this enclosure I have something amazing, but of course that it is hiding. And you see there is a, a runaway roach that is still alive somehow. The animal inside... Where are you? I'm trying to get it to... Nope, give me a second. Because inside I have a Daman Diadema. Maybe I can show it. You can only see the legs, but it is the most terrifying looking arachnid. While at the same time completely harmless, as you can see by me just sticking my hand underneath the cork bark. It cannot sting, maybe it can bite, but it doesn't have venom, so it is alright. I can show you the, the video, a clip of how it looks, because it looks so, so awesome. If you can get a hand on this animal, I am definitely recommending getting it. Now, over here I also have something that is not a tarantula. It is a stick insect, or calling it leaf insect would be more fitting, because it looks like a leaf, right? <laughs> An amazing looking bugger, right? <laughs> now, underneath I have another enclosure that is filled with this plant, and inside I have these, the spiny assassin bugs, or should I say spiny assassin guys, as I used to call them. I have two of these and I used to have a huge colony, a huge colony of them, but thankfully I managed to get rid of majority of babies and I'm now left with only two individuals. Obviously the same sex because I had no more babies after that. Empty enclosure, a pretty Pamphobetius mascara tarantula, a fat one, you see, and fast one. <laughs> then here we see also another pretty tarantula. You see, they are getting prettier and prettier. The carapace on this Xenestis tarantula is out of this world, but unfortunately I think that this is a male. Also another mature male. Then look at these beauties. This is Gramostola acteon. Oh, I am loving her because she is super feisty and super pretty, but to her right there is another Gramostola, but this one is Gramostola pulcha, and this is hands down the prettiest Gramostola, just because how black it is. Yeah, it is awesome looking, and they get huge, so this is like a small juvenile female. They get like uh, huge. Gramostola pulchripes male in the premalt. Then we come to these, the Brachypelma gang. This one is my prettiest. Brachypelma auratum, but she is busy destroying the background. Uh, you see what they are doing to the backgrounds. Terrible, terrible. Brachypelma albiceps, you see? Brachypelma baumgarteni. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Brachypelma classy. Also, can you guess? A pretty one. <laughs> they are all pretty for sure. And last one, Brachypelma hamori. This is female and this is male, you see. These are like classic Brachypelmas. Above, Aphonopelma bicoloratum. Kind of similar to Brachypelmas, but there are differences. Uh, this webbed enclosure, can I show you the... Mm, no, it is hiding. 
the Neoholotele in Tse. And this one, Hilobrachis, also super webbed up. I love Hilobrachis species, look what they do. I recently rehoused this one. This is the Hilobrachis discolus, and look, it is down there. She made a masterpiece out of this enclosure, as they always do. This is the Psalopeus Cambrigay. Yeah, but you can only see legs, nothing dramatic. Psalopeus pulher, Psalopeus pulher. This is the, oh, I actually forgot. Over there, you see on top, let me bring them down. These are the smallest tarantulas that I have. All of these are babies that came from this female. The ones on the left are from the first exec and the ones from the right are from the second exec. These are all that I have left. I will be bringing them to our next expo in February when I come to Terra Plaza. So you can come and get them if you want. And also these are small tarantulas. Inside of these two I have jumping spiders. And inside of these five I have some true spiders. And inside of these I have another, another whip scorpion species, but you see, this is a tailless whip scorpion species, but this is the adult size. They don't get bigger. This is some dwarf species. And also they should be parthenogenic, so in the future I should get some babies. It would be cool to have a colony inside of Junglearium, although frogs would probably eat all of them. And we can finish this wall. The reason why I wasn't showing you these enclosures is because they are actually empty, while these are also empty, but I have some fruit fly colonies inside, you see? These are all the fruit flies that I'm cultivating to feed um, frogs that I will also show you later. So as I said, these are empty. Inside of these I have some Salpeus uh, species, but they are hiding, of course. Inside of these three, oh, look at this. Someone molted. <laughs> this will go into a molt enclosure, you see? This enclosure is currently empty, so I have all the torrential molds inside. In case you don't know how torrentials grow, this is how they grow. They just pull out of their old exoskeleton because uh, the exoskeleton cannot grow. They need to generate a new exoskeleton underneath that one. And someone is calling me. We'll need to call back later. So these amazing webbers are uh, Hilobrachis fibriatus. And you see, this was actually an experiment. This was actually an experiment where I place three identical tarantulas in different setups because apparently these tarantulas are opportunistic webbers or burrowers. So this one got a lot of substrate and a starter burrow. This one got tiny bit of substrate and a lot of anchoring points for webbing. While this one had a mixture of burrow, decent amount of substrate and webbing. And I wanted to see if they will prefer one setup to other, but after a year of having them inside of these enclosures, you see enclosures basically look <laughs> identical. So I think that tarantulas don't really care about setup. I mean this exact genus, the Hilobrachis tarantulas. If we move down, we have some Harpacteras. This is Harpactera marxi behind, but you cannot see her. Well, this one is pretty Harpactera pulchripes. Yeah, this is a mature female and I really need a male for this one. And look, she also webbed. Um, these are all African tarantulas and you can see the pattern. They all make a lot of web. This is an empty enclosure because the tarantula from this enclosure died. But over here, you can see Apterinocheus murinus buri, the OBT or orange baboon tarantula. They are kind of mean sometimes. <laughs> and here another Pterinochus species, but hiding, yeah. That concludes this wall. And I didn't even mention that all of these enclosures that you will see in this video, all of these uh, furniture pieces and everything, everything is made 100% by me. Also all of these enclosures and of course this enclosure that I'm building. Everything is built by me and I'm actually building these enclosures for sale. You see it got really clever locking mechanism where you can, you cannot open it, but if you lift the enclosure, it opens like this. Perfect and easy. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot order them online. I only sell on expos in Budapest and soon I will go to Prague. But if you are crafty and you can buy the glass locally, you can buy the plastic parts, just the plastic parts you need to build this enclosure. You can buy them on my web shop. You see these plastic parts. Parts. All of these parts are used to build the enclosures. So if you cannot buy the enclosures on the on the expos where I'm selling them, you can order and build them by yourself. 
you see down here I have some glass panels that I'm using for for enclosure builds. And this bowl, this is actually an enclosure that is now empty, but it used to house Felix, my panther chameleon. And if you didn't watch last week's video, in that video I explained everything what happened with Felix and how his story ended up. And also as a tribute, I have made this plush. I mean, I didn't made it. I had a company to design the plush, but this is actually a Felix plush. You see, this is a unique chameleon design uh, made just for Felix uh, with his colors and everything. And it will be available for the order for next two weeks. After that, he will no longer be available. So if you want to have a derpy Felix of your own, a Felix that will never leave your side, you can get him and yeah i just miss him because he was my favorite animal in the dark den even though tarantulas are my main thing and i love them felix was felix just had a special place in my heart now let's first tackle this thing in the middle as you see i removed the top so we can record better but now unfortunately no one is around to record but if i shine some light inside of the holes we should be able to spot some, you see, because inside of this enclosure I should have at least 10 Balfouris. And also you can see another one down there, you can see the booty, also another booty down there. But basically a lot of them was outside and then when I started recording, of course, they all hide. So these tarantula species got a rare ability, or should I say unique ability, to live together in a communal, communal environment. There are some other tarantulas that can tolerate each other in communal setup, but not as good as Balfouris. They can basically, without any problem, live like that. Unlike tarantulas inside of this enclosure underneath, you see, this is another communal setup, but I can tell you that it is not as successful as Balfouris enclosure. They were all bodies from the same exec. You see, there is one and over there is another one inside of this hole you can maybe see a tarantula but it is funny how these two are actually living in a close proximity to each other you see the only problem is i used to have a 50 tarantulas inside and now there is definitely there aren't definitely 50 tarantulas anymore because at this size i would spot 50 of them at least i would see more i think that there is one inside of this hole but the reason why there are no longer 50 tarantulas inside is I think this hole right here because that one contains a one huge tarantula, at least huge when you compare it with the other ones. You see it down there? <laughs> yeah, I think that that tarantula was the problem. Oh, and it looks like one before it decided to show up. You see, show up to the party. These little buggers are the perfect communal tarantula and they are pretty pretty for sure. Now let's take a break from tarantulas as I show you the animals uh, inside of these enclosures. Although these are tarantulas and this is tarantula, but the rest aren't, I promise. Firstly, let me show you this one because this is one really, really cool. Oh, I definitely need some light. You see over there, I have a vampire crab. And just look how cool it looks. It got purple coloration with yellow eyes. I mean, it is a crazy combination. And inside of this enclosure, I only unfortunately have this one. This is the only one that survived. All the others that I had inside died within like two months. While this one, he lives for more than a year. I think even two years. Yeah, now enclosure, next enclosure. Look what we got here. Right there, we got one poison dart frog, you see? Dendrobates auratus. This one is Hecate, while the other one, I have two inside. The other one is called Mai, although I might be mixing them up. I need to see both of them at the same time to be certain which one is which. You can easily distinguish them, but it is easy to know which one is which if I see both. You see, this is my first vivarium type of enclosure. It is still kind of holding up well, I would say. Now let's go up because right here I have something interesting. Uh, you see, they are running around. These are up roaches. Roaches, uh, never mind. And if I take this, this cork bark. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> 
now you can see I have a lot of roaches inside of this coral bark you can see and also some isopods a lot of isopods living together with these roaches a great communal <laughs> yep 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 and I think that this cork bark is filled with adults but I don't really want to disturb them that much <laughs> on the left I have the enclosure that I already showed you this is where I dump all the all the molds at least the molds that I'm not uh, saving because up here on this on this styrofoam I have a bunch of saved molds you see that are spread and all nice okay not every mold is nice but majority are nice and saved <laughs> i plan to put it on the wall but first i need to make room for it uh, over here i have some tiny tiny animals you see these little buggers they are cleaning the enclosures but the coolest thing is they are like red ones although there is really not much of them it used to be ton of these i guess they are hiding now i don't know ah yeah down there you can see some orange one but these are basically just like springtails that are together with isopods keeping the enclosures clean and in this big bucket right here i have the the springtail colony let me show you there is currently not much springtails but they are going to soon reproduce in great numbers because i'm using i'm using them inside of my enclosures basically every new build of bigger enclosure especially the ones that got higher humidity inside they all need some of the cleanup crew inside alrighty now here here i have more stick insects that are munching on the plants you see these are the jungle nymphs and they are huge as you can see these two they are females oh see <laughs> and they can be grumpy sometimes while this this is the male of the same species you see the males aren't that attractive but they actually have uh, really attractive wings if we can get this one to show oh you see there are his wings that he is spreading so male and female i have two females and two males oh there is the second male behind the branch they are super cool you see they have this enormous enclosure but currently they are over there where the food is now left on the left we have a pretty cute little fella and his name is thor through this hole you can see him this is the leopard gecko hey thor come come it looks like he is not in the mood for hanging out but at least you can see his lovely face down there actually i'm gonna try to lure him with a roach i didn't even show you my feeder roach colony that i'm currently mainly using for feeding it currently seems like there is not that many roaches inside right but if we do this and 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 if we do this you see there there is a lot of roaches inside i'm basically using this colony to feed all my animals for pest maybe half a year or i think even more but there are just so many of them and i don't have i basically have no adults i'm always prioritizing to feed with adults so that way they cannot reproduce but still there is just so many inside uh you see i don't even see a single adult currently i'll just grab this one and we will try to lure the the thor hey thor thor He's definitely not in the mood because otherwise he would just be bolting out grabbing the roach. Well, okay, you can at least see how Tarantula grabs the roach, right? Don't disappoint. <laughs> that was quick and easy, right? <laughs> A simple kill. Enjoy your meal. And you, Thor, you disappointed us. Okay, if we go down, uh, <laughs> this, this enclosure contains also something unique and cool but it is never outside so i will need to intervene because i want to show you this animal you see this is a centipede and for some reason i mean because they love to hide uh, she's never basically outside i rarely even get a chance to feed her because of that but uh, this is a skull pen that i don't really remember the, the genus name but i will write it down uh, when i set up this enclosure someone said Haha, that is the last time you are seeing your centipede outside and 
yeah, that person was right. She's basically never out. Now let's move down and we remove this because this belongs to this enclosure. But these bodies, these are headlight cockroaches and this is actually a female. So you cannot really see why they are called like that. Let me try to get a male. Here is the male and you can see why it is called a headlight cockroach. Because it got those two yellow dots that look like headlights. <laughs> I also have a ton of them inside of this enclosure. I really don't know what I will do with them. I was also feeding a lot with them. You see this in the back. This is actually the expanding foam. I made the expanding foam background just like I, I'm making them. In majority of my enclosures you see all of that. This is expanding foam and styrofoam. That is expanding foam and styrofoam. But these guys, they stripped away all the dirt that I put on it and they dug holes inside of it. I mean, they ate away the expanding foam to create the, the tunnels like that. It is crazy. You see how they live inside of those tunnels. Actually pretty cool, but crazy. <laughs> To the right, another reptile that we probably won't see, but okay, we can kind of barely see. This inside, this is a crested gecko and maybe, no, he's too far away. This is a crested gecko named Chips and yeah, he's inside of his hole during the night, which is now he is outside, but since I turned on the light, then he hides because he doesn't like lights and he doesn't like me. Basically, we cannot really have any interaction besides him losing his mind when I'm trying to hold him. So I just don't hold him because of that. <laughs> you can say that we have a bit of love-hate relationship. Uh, oh, now I realized I forgot to mention this enclosure down here. You see, I have snails inside, bunch of giant African land snails, although the ones that are currently outside aren't really that giant. I have one adult inside and bunch of smallish ones like these that are out. Although they are not that exciting, so I kind of always forget to mention them even. <laughs> and after all of these animals, we can go back to tarantulas, right? We have two more reptiles and bunch of tarantulas, yes. But I will show you the big ones. And this one is most likely the biggest in the dark den. This is Linda, the Terraforza Styrmi. And I will try to open the enclosure. And hopefully she won't run away. Okay. And the other side. Oh yes, 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 yes. Let's have some fun, shall we? Yeah, she's playing with my nerves. Oh, there we go. The perfect view on Linda. There was a steer me. The biggest tarantula in the world, even though, of course, she's not fully grown and she should get significantly bigger, I think. Yeah, at least the ones in the nature are significantly bigger. If I remember correctly, she was actually the first gifted tarantula that I received from a subscriber. And I received her when she was a baby, like this big. And now look at the beast that she is. Uh, amazing, amazing. Let's close her enclosure because I don't want her to jump outside. And oh, bye bye. Let's move up to another Terraforza. But this one is Terraforza Blondie. And her name is Bonita, but. We can't really see her because she's inside of her hole and she's actually freshly molted, which is a great thing because I have a male, a mature male waiting for her to now get ready for some action. <laughs> that will be fun for sure. And the last one on this shelf, you see this enclosure actually looks empty. That is because the inhabitant of this enclosure is in a, not hibernation, but I believe the the right terminology is brumation. You see here I have a pygmy bearded dragon and he's sleeping. Normally his light is turned off because he doesn't need it. But for the for today's video, I turned it on. Right here I have my trusty cart that I built. It is super useful. I have all the stuff that I need for maintenance and I'm just dragging that through the dark den as I'm doing the maintenance. Now I don't understand how I managed to live without something like this. Uh, over here I have the roach colonies. Actually on this side I have dubias. 
I have a lot of dubious because basically I'm not using this colony so that's why they are booming inside. Uh, I'm not using them because I have those roaches down there that are also reproducing like crazy even though I'm using them. <laughs> Eventually I will need this colony and on the left side I have the, the failed lateralis colony all those babies that I showed you are from this colony on the left, but no point in showing you because I only have a couple of roaches over there. These are the enclosure parts as I already explained. And over there, just a small part of my can collection and mostly I have monsters here. I actually gave up on collecting all different kinds of cans because all of you started sending me cans and I have, I have just too much of them. So I'm just focusing on monsters from now and these are all the ones that I have. <laughs> yeah. If you're wondering why am I collecting cans, I don't know, I just like it. Now, the real deal, the real monster of the enclosure. <laughs> this is currently the biggest enclosure that I built just because I didn't finish the junglearium. So this one holds the title of being the biggest enclosure. Inside I have one huge tarantula just like those two. I have another Terraforza, but this is Terraforza Apophysis and she lives inside of... I hate this fog, but let me show you this first. You see I also have a lot of isopods, but this is not as much as I have. There are a ton of them inside, but it's currently it is night. They are kind of scattered around. And you can see, yeah, ton of isopods, bunch of pretty plants and actually this plant is the most impressive because look at how big this leaf is. This is the same plant as this one, the same species of a simple house plant but when you give a lot of humidity and a lot of light it can grow this big and apparently even be it can be even bigger. Crazy! So yeah I have some simple plants inside, nothing special. I really want Jungleirium to have uh, more special looking plants. Although I really like the appearance of the enclosure. Anyhow, under this cork bark you see from this entrance to all the way to that entrance or that exit, whatever, all of that is tarantula's hide and I recently added her to this enclosure. So she is still kind of adapting, but currently it is going great. And in the future, as I already said in the video where I set up this enclosure, in the future I plan to introduce one arboreal species of tarantula, uh, hoping that she will, just as arboreal species do, that she will hang out on top. So therefore I will be able to have a communal setup of totally different tarantula species. That will be a nice and I think unique experiment because I don't think that anyone ever had a successful enclosure containing two different species. Yeah, it will be fun. Oh, I just noticed that this bromeliad is actually spawning two new bromeliads, you see? Awesome! I will need a lot of bromeliads for the junglearium for sure. Now let's move on top because right here we have a little confused guy because it should be night and he should be sleeping but the lights are on, the heat is on and he is kind of confused not knowing what is actually happening. This is Despacito, the bearded dragon and he recently woke up from the hibernation or should I say bermation. Just like that pygmy bearded dragon he was also asleep for a few months but now he woke up and he slowly started to eat normally and stuff. <laughs> He is a cool and chill fella and that's why he is called Despacito. Despacito means slow in Spanish, you know, or something like that. Now I think we covered everything inside of this room and we can safely proceed to the other one. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Oh, these are some of the fennas that I received during the years and even though I currently don't have a fan mail address, I hope that soon I'm gonna have one available so once again you guys will be able to send me stuff like fan art, fan letters and whatever. Okay, now we are here, the, the main room. Right here I have a bunch of different smaller tarantulas and also some other ones like one small whip scorpion and one trapdoor spider, but also small. So as these are growing I am moving them into these enclosures first and then eventually they go into these permanent enclosures. But tarantulas are slow growing animals, 
kind of slow growing animals so they spend few years or I mean at least a year inside of these smaller enclosures. Okay now we will quickly run through these enclosures and right off the bat thankfully at least one big poke is outside and this is this Pizzoteria regalis. Look how beautiful this one is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is an arboreal species, so that is why they have a bit taller enclosures. As you see, all of these are pokies, but they are usually hiding. Oh, all of these, except these two, of course. Inside, I have female and male Davos pentaloris. I attempted to breed them, but the female wasn't really responsive. So now I place their enclosures like this so they can feel each other through the ventilation and hopefully she will accept him on the next attempt. Also up here we have another Pezzoteria regalis outside, but this is... <laughs> never mind, that is a smaller female. <laughs> this is something that I want to show you, these tarantulas. Uh, but yeah, I need extra light for them. All right, this one. Just so we can see how beautiful they are. Oh, at least that one is still outside. That is a Pezzoteria Metallica. And you see how bluish coloration they got. Uh, uh, oh, hell yeah. I have three inside and they are kind of communal. I used to have five inside, but one is a mature male that I showed you earlier and one disappeared, completely disappeared. So I assume that it got eaten by some of the others. Although you see, three are still inside and that male matured inside of that enclosure. So it kind of works, but it is not perfect. Now on top, I have one tarantula in the pre-mold down there. Yeah, she will molt soon. Also you see another tarantula here and here and here. But I won't be showing this because they are small and I have some bigger here, right? Firstly, on top, this is a Nandochromatus, slightly bigger than the one that I showed you earlier, but a same tarantula, yeah. This is a Xenesty species, white, and you can clearly see that based on how it destroyed the background and exposed the white styrofoam, and you see, clearly a Xenesty species, white. <laughs> Here I have Brachypelma Behmei, not visible. Tiltocatl Vagans, just barely visible over there. Gramostola Rosea. Sashenka, you see? Ah. I didn't really mention this, but I don't generally handle my tarantulas. On super, super rare occasions, I will handle it. And if I will choose a tarantula to handle, it will usually be this one right here, because she is a sweetheart. Down here is and you cannot see her. Here I have Hilobrachis, uh, Brachypelma Emilia. I missed at that corner today earlier, so yeah, that's why she's hanging over there. Hysterocrates Gigas, mother of all of those tarantulas down there in that communal, as I already showed you. Down here you can see a Gramostola, no, not Gramostola, uh, Acanthoscuria geniculata, beautiful Acanthoscuria geniculata, super feisty tarantula. And the grand finale, this is Blondino, he is the Terrafosa blondy mature male. I guess he is eager to get out and meet Bonita. Sorry, buddy, but you will need to wait just a little bit more. Hmm. Uh, empty enclosure, empty enclosure, and these three are also empty. Um, this, should I tell you? Okay, this right here is next video, so if you don't want to spoil yourself next video, next Monday's video, uh, I suggest you to skip to this mark, this minute mark, because I will now show this enclosure and yeah, it will kind of spoil you the, the Monday's video. Because this is another experiment, as you can see. Inside I have like half a meter of substrate, actually exactly half a meter, because this is 60 centimeters tall enclosure. And the reason why I have a lot of substrate is because I put a fossorial tarantula and I wanted to see how deep will it dig and I can tell you that it dug a lot just look at this <laughs> it started here of course and then if we turn the enclosure it went <laughs> right there is the tarantula you see Pelenobius muticus the king baboon so the height goes then she reached this end she turned went further down 
all the way to the front she basically reached the bottom she created a big room here so i guess that this is the end but <laughs> on next monday you will be able to find out everything about that enclosure and this brings us to this the final the final enclosure that i need to show you the junglearium of course it is a work in progress obviously just by looking at this bucket and all these plants all of these plants aren't meant for this enclosure they are just inside for the light but i actually have a drainage layer installed you see i have a pump here this will be the the filtration because on this side this you see this is a waterfall the water is going through that pipe here behind the rocks and it goes out of that hole going down here into this kind of lake thingy and then it falls through here goes over there into that lake and finally into this aquarium part of this uh this enclosure of course this is a polydarium which means that it got a land section and of course a water section but there is still a lot of work inside so yeah once i finish it it will be super epic and inside i will have all sorts of animals i'm still not not sure uh, which exact species i will have but there will be frogs there will be lizards there will be uh, millipedes there will be isopods there will be roaches like hopefully crabs some aquatic animals who knows i will try to fit as much as different animals as i can can safely of course animals that won't eat each other and animals that live inside of same environment high humidity environment okay that is it i think i showed you major i think i showed you everything but i probably forgot about something it doesn't really matter i just keep watching my videos and you will see other stuff that i maybe forgot <laughs> so i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did Thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel more, there's a Patreon page. Also, don't forget to get your personal Felix link in the description. Um, thumbs it up, comment something. See you again soon. Bye.